Okay, thanks, Nick. Uh, folks, uh, again, uh, on behalf of Edward Don and company and the Hody Group, we'd like to thank you for your time and attention today. Thanks for taking time out of your busy calendars and joining us uh, for yet another HGI product focus. As Nick said, I'm your host, John D. I am with the Hody Group, and uh, I'm a Senior Business Development Director in Marketing and Sales. Uh, today's topic and theme for this HDI product focus installment is save money with SureFit trash can liner system and how we can move the needle and savings in one of the most commonly overlooked Jansan categories. We're going to show you how to stop wasting plastic money and time by implementing a simple saving solution, again, called Edward Don's SureFit can liner system. Yes, I just said trash bags, garbage bags, uh, can liners. So uh, you'd be surprised on how much money you can save. So the bigger your operation, the more savings impact we can have. All you need to do is reduce plastic. Did you know you buy liners like you buy your meat by the pound? The more heavier the gauges or the larger the bag, the more plastic you use. We're gonna show you a system where you can reduce plastic and actually lower your case weight, which equals dollars saved to you. And again, those dollars then can be redirected into your operational needs, perhaps reinvested to make some money uh, and grow your ticket sales within your operation and stop throwing those dollars away literally in the trash. So uh, we promise you one thing, when we're done today, you'll never look at a trash liner the same way ever again. So, so let's start with uh, uh, introducing some of my colleagues for you today. Joining us uh, again, I'd like to introduce Melissa Marguerite, uh, Senior Business Development Director uh, with the Hody Group. Melissa is a 30 year plus veteran. Uh, she has uh, been spending all that time in the culinary food service and hospitality space. I always like to give a big thanks out to Melissa. She's been a great mentor for me and uh, everything I've learned about trash liners uh, comes from Melissa. She's affectionately known sometimes as the bag lady, but she's hardly <laughs> the bag lady. So thanks Melissa for being with us today. So glad you can make it. Thanks, John. Really happy to be here. I know you are. We love doing this, don't we? We, we dance yeah. well together. Yes. Okay, great. I also want to introduce Nick D, uh, who gave you the housekeeping uh, information. Uh, Nick is, uh, and I work for Hody South in the Southeast market for Edward Don. Nick is a business development director. He also covers Florida. And uh, Nick is also our mission control flight coordinator today. Uh, for our presentation. Uh, thanks, Nick, for joining us. And Nick, uh, you are so creative, and we thank you all for what you do. Thanks again. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Well, we're glad you guys are here. So, um, so right now, what we'd like to do is turn your attention to a quick promo video overview of the Sure, the sure Fit can liner system. Uh, we're going to hope this will give you a better understanding and a feel for what Sure Fit is and what value and savings we can show you for your operation. Let's watch it right here. Meet Joe. Joe is the owner of Never Hungry Cafe. Joe's cafes are doing quite well, but his operating costs continue to rise, and he tries to save money when and where he can. Joe meets with his Edward Don rep, Shirley Kent. Shirley loves working with her customers and is committed to helping them control their costs and save money in their day-to-day -day operation. While touring Joe's property, Shirley notices that Joe is currently using 23-gallon Slim Jim trash cans and the trash bags inside them are too big. Joe tells Shirley that he is currently buying a 60-gallon trash bag and Shirley knows that a 60-gallon bag in a 23-gallon can represents 70% waste. Shirley looks at Joe and tells him that she just found him some money. Shirley grabs a notepad and sketches out some basic math showing Joe's current spend. Let's take a closer look. Joe is currently buying 10 cases per month for six locations. Joe is paying $26.40 a case for a 60 gallon, 38 by 58, 1.2 mil trash bag. That's 720 cases a year for all six locations. That adds up to $19,000 per year in trash bags. 
after hearing this, Joe is furious. Shirley looks at Joe and says, no worries, Joe, I have what you need. Shirley begins to spin and transforms into Shirley Shorefit, the super savings hero. Shirley introduces Joe to the Edward Don Shorefit trash bag system and tells Joe to stop wasting plastic, money, and time and start using the right size bags for his trash cans. Shirley now demonstrates for Joe the perfect customized fit and size of the Surefit trash bag for his 23-gallon trash can. Joe is utterly amazed because he had no idea the Surefit system existed. Shirley grabs her notepad and shows Joe the new and improved savings using Surefit trash bags. 10 cases per month at six locations is 60 cases. The new 23-gallon Surefit bag is now $19.20 per case. In total, that's 720 cases a year for all six locations. Joe is spending about $19,000 per year with the 60-gallon bag. With SureFit and the right bag, Joe would now spend under $14,000 per year. That's a savings of more than $5,000. Joe is so amazed with the savings Shirley has shown that he places his order with Shirley for his new SureFit trash bags immediately. Stop wasting plastic, money, and time. You too can experience the same savings for your operation. Edward Don Sure Fit Trash Bags. Be sure, be fit, be economical. For more information, call 800 777 4DON or visit don.com. All right. Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, surely Surefit is Melissa. So, I mean, <laughs> Melissa, I'm glad you didn't wear your mask today. Not that. <laughs> I thought <mask>. about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Melissa, let's dive right into the Edward Don Surefit can liner system. Let's talk some trash. I love talking trash. It's amazing how much money we, we find operators just in their trash alone. So, all right, Melissa, we saw this video, great concept. Um, can you help our operators that are tuned in today kind of understand basically, you know, what is the Edward Don Surefit can liner system? It's benefits to them, the operator, their operation, as well as the industry today. Can you shed a little light on that? Sure, happy to. Um, hi, everybody, glad to see everyone that was able to join us. Um, so, uh, many, many years ago, more than I'd like to admit, I, I started working with Edward Don on changing up the can liner industry. I'd been doing it for years before that, and we, we recognized that there was a possible break in the system and something that we could maybe do to fix it. So we, we looked at what was going on in the industry, and the size 38 by 58, 60 mm -hmm. gallon bag keeps coming up. It's our most popular liner that we still sell today, um, maybe not Edward Don, but the industry, um, that bag was designed to fit a 60 gallon drum. And that bag is, uh, it, have you seen a 60 gallon steel drum anywhere in a, um, out in a kitchen anywhere? No. So that bag was designed to fit a 60 gallon drum. And what we have today are Slim Jims 32s and 44s. So what we have going on is a bag that's much, bags that are much too big for the cans that exist. So what we decided to do was try to fix the system. We uh, designed SureFit and I know can liners aren't sexy and all of that, but they can be when it comes to saving a lot of money. So we knew that if we develop bags that fit the sizes of a Slim Jim, a 32 and a 44, and we made them fit like a glove, that they fit tight around the rim as Nick is going to show you. And they fit tight around the rim and they have six to eight inches of overhang that the bag would work perfect. And that ultimately we'd be able to save the operator money. Mm -hmm. That was the end game. The end game wasn't to make the bags look neater or nicer on the can, although that is a nice effect of SureFit. The idea was, could we, could we save the operator money? And that is why we developed SureFit. Nice job, Nick. That's nice job, Nick. Yeah. 
Good job, buddy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing when we walk into space uh, or back of houses or on grounds, what we find. And typically, as Shirley did with Joe, she found bags that were way too big for the, uh, for the can. And what I love about the SureFit system is the actual fit. It doesn't fall in. I have demonstrated at, at uh, convenience store shows and trade shows. I actually will put that, that Slim Jim liner in the can, Melissa, and I throw like a five ga or a, like a, a gallon of bleach in it. You know, of course, you know, Edward Don always has their chemicals. And I throw it right in there in front of operators and it doesn't fall in. And, and they love that demonstration. You know, and of course, after, you know, 12 hours, you just want to keep throwing them in there. So yeah. uh, anyway, but anyway. yeah, you reach all the way down. And when you put that bag and you reach all the way down, you touch the bottom of the can, you know, that bag's going to the right length and it's not going to fall inside the can because nobody wants to reach inside a messy can and pull the bag out. So it, and and operators always say, well, do I have enough to tie off? Well, you know, once you put your garbage in, the receptacle holds the trash in it when you pull it out all the trash falls down. You have plenty to tie off. I don't care if it's a Slim Jim or a 44 gallon. So exactly. anyway, uh, Nick, excellent job on the demo there, buddy. Yeah, thanks, uh, Nick. So, so Melissa, um, what's the first thing an operator really should look at to implement the CanLiner system savings solution? How do they start? So it's easy. It's to look at the trash cans that are in use right now. So um, are they 23 gallon Slim Jims? Are they 32s? Are they 44s? And sometimes with those two big brutes, the 32 and the 44s, it's hard to tell um, what that size is. I've been doing this forever and I sometimes oh, yeah. still look at a 32 and think, is it a 44, is it a 32? Is it a 32? So a great way is to peel back the bag uh, on the rim and, and most of the time the, the gallon size is embossed on the rim. If not, you could quickly Google the size of a 44 or 32 diameter and height and you can gather by that, by that information which size you have. Mm -hmm. So what we wanna do is we wanna identify the sizes of the cans, but we also wanna to look for the largest can in use. There's always a renegade can somewhere that's Sounds throwing like. off the whole system. A lot of times we see it at the dish sink. So we might have Slim Jims throughout the whole kitchen and then at the dish sink we have this giant round can. And so we want to identify the largest can and then we want to uh, find bags that fit those cans. Most of the time we're going to recommend two sizes of bags. We're going to recommend one size to fit that large can and another size to fit the smaller cans like the Slim Jims. Mm -hmm. doesn't, the operator doesn't always want that. Sometimes no. they want a one bag. So we'll um, identify the largest can and, and find a bag to fit that. And then it'll be too big for the Slim Jims, but we're still going to save money. Right. So that is the first thing to do. And then within the SureFit system, we have different colors. So we have black or clear, we have high density, we have low density, and we have all sorts of different thicknesses. So we have uh, the type of bag to meet every need, every operator's need. We're not asking the operator to um, reduce quality in any way. In fact, right. sometimes we can in increase quality by um, saving them money. So um, that's kind of the strategy, John, to make a long story short. Good. No, excellent explanation. So, um, you know, we talked a little bit about size. So, you know, we talk about stop wasting plastic. Okay, so let's talk about what's the biggest, in your opinion, most commonly found mistake that an operator makes when it comes to their trash liners. Doesn't size really matter? It does. So that is, that's a great question. That what, what we run into is the one size fits all mentality, which that 38 by 58 is kind of what plays into that perfectly. Uh, it's, it fits everything, although it really fits nothing properly. So it fits uh, the Slim Jim, it's 75% too big. It fits the 32, it's 50% too big. It fits the 44, but it's too long. So there's all sorts of, um, but one size fit, fits all mentality. What that really boils down to and what it means to the operator is extra costs. So it, you buy a bigger bag, like John said earlier, you're, you have more weight to the case, you're going to uh, pay more money. So by simply cutting down to a, the proper size bag, we can save you money. Plus it looks a whole lot better. Look at the, yeah. the way these. 
Yeah. So I think bags can be really exciting in that way, but the one size fits all is really the biggest, biggest issue. We, we told you, you will never look at a trash bag the same way again when we're done with you all, I promise you. But <laughs> Melissa, <can't. laughs> Melissa, what's a, what's a pigtail represent? That's just waste. So if you have to tie off the bag with that much plastic, that is plastic that that's pure cost to you. That, that is all that extra plastic that is unnecessary. Uh, the bag can only hold as much as the can fits. Um, you can't add any more to that can. So all that excess plastic is just waste and really for the operator cost. Right, right. And you know, many times we walk on an op in an operator's or on grounds or in the back of house in their space and we commonly find 80%, sometimes 90% of the cans are all Slim Jims. And yet you find that Renegade can and then you find the liner that they're purchasing. And again, that 60 gallon can or that 60 gallon liner, they think immediately that they're going into a, a 55 gallon can. And when we go on the property, one of the first things that we do um, is let me explain the first thing we do, and Melissa kind of alluded to this, we do a waste audit. What does that mean? Well, we're going to walk around your property and survey to try to find where that largest can is. And when we find that largest can, then we're going to know why or what kind of liner you should be buying. Many times, here's the head fake, like Melissa said, it's you, you get really you know, you can really make a mistake in thinking you've got a larger can than you do. But if you're using a 38 by 58, let them in on the secret, Melissa. If you're using a 38 by 58, do they have 55 gallon cans most no. of the time or 99% of the time? No, they do not. Um, that, that bag is actually too small for a 55 gallon can. We make a sure fit 55 gallon bag and, and it's much wider around uh, the circumference than that bag. So we automatically know when a customer is using a 38 by 58 that there's no 55 gallon cans on property. Edward Don doesn't even stock 55 gallon cans. They're just not in use. They're too, it's too heavy to lift that trash. Right. And, and I'm going to get to a concept here in a second. Nick, can you do me a favor? Are you able to pull the slide up of the 55 gallon can with that 3858 in it that's already torn up and ripping. Can you show us that? Anyway, I'll keep going. So when we come on property, we do a waste audit and then we identify the largest can. So here's a concept that I share with all my operators and Melissa taught me a lot of the basics and we, we have kind of developed this to try to reach the, the, the customer at all levels. There's a perfect example of a 55 gallon can uh, with a, a with a 38 by 58 in it. Look at that bag. Now, some of you may not care, but I will tell you right now that can is nasty. And I don't know the last time you checked OSHA requirements, but we know that the, your your employees can't lift more than shouldn't be lifting more than 50 pounds. Now, that's up to you as an operator. If that's what you want to make them lift, that's that's your prerogative. However, who wants to have that risk in, in, in their, on their staff and have it an, an issue happen? So let me share a concept with you that I always say to an operator when they, they sit there like Joe and they scratch their head, like I've never seen this before, what an awesome you know, solution this is. So if I could save you as an operator $1,000, would you spend $300? Well, I would hope 99.999% of the time, the answer is yes. Because if you're going to spend $300 and in, in to save $1,000, you are still net $700 of profit. Now, what does the $300 come from? Let's assume that you have 10 Renegade cans in your, on your, in your space and that they're 55 or 44 gallon. Now, you know and I know you're going to pull that bag every three, four hours, and sometimes waste is never more than half full in that receptacle. And you're going to pull it. Why? Because it gets too heavy, especially in the prep by the prep tables. So anyway, the concept is if we can help you reduce that can size down to a 32, or if I was my operation, I'd go with all Slim Jims and buy a really inexpensive bag and really save a lot of money. So that's the concept. If I could save you a thousand, would you spend 300. And Edward Don has the most amazing cans. And, and we are big fans, Melissa and I and Nick, 
of the Edward Don Carlisle Don branded cans. They're great. They fit our liner system perfectly. And let me tell you, you, don't, you know, there's a lot of other brand names out there. If you got to have them, go ahead. But if you want to be economical, pick up a Don branded can, pick up our SureFit liner system to go in it. And let me tell you, you're going to save money. So Nick, you want to, um, talking about oversized liners and cans, you want to share an example of how this strategy uh, that you ran into recently on can reduction uh, within Edward Don down in South Florida. Can you give us that customer uh, situation and case uh, example that you ran into? Absolutely. Uh, just trying to bring my video back up here. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, we can see you awesome. too. Mm -hmm. All right, great. I'm going to get ready to show here a little bit of what we're talking about. So uh, last year before this pandemic hit, actually, I believe it was earlier this year, I uh, went to a, called on a, a property with an operator uh, and our Edward Don rep. And uh, it was a hotel here locally here in Florida. And the first thing is John said, the first thing that I do when I go on property is we want to identify the biggest can. Now, just from the outside, before we even enter the building, I'm looking at the property. So this is out by the pool area. Using my phone, I go around, I find the cans and I mark them. So we've got 32s outside. I take out my handy dandy sure fit kit and I size the bag. I can just automatically tell. So now as I start to now mosey my way inside, I have one more 32 by the uh, side entrance from the pool into the hotel. And then I get into the kitchen. So before I even talk to uh, you as the customer, I'm doing my reconnaissance because I wanna make sure I know exactly what I'm looking at. So now we've identified a 44. I'm pretty sure I've already found the biggest can, but lo and behold, as John had shown earlier, this is actually from the same case study. There is in fact a 55 gallon can right by the dish pit. So my next step is to figure out what kind of bag is that? Pretty much I can tell what it's going to be, but I want to see thickness and everything that goes with that. So I found a case in the back storage room and here I am looking at a 38 by 58. It was in fact a true 1.7 mil bag, um, case pack 100. Very typical. We see this a lot. Um, and from here, what am I doing is I'm trying to get the operator and I want to have a conversation. So I talked to the operator about what they're currently using and what I found. As you guys can see, the most common bag out of everything was a 32 gallon bag. So while I'm talking to the operator, um, one of the visiting chefs from New York City hmm. wheels out a 32 gallon brute on a dolly and wheels right by us. And I said, chef, there's a 32 gallon right there. And that's a perfect scenario uh, of a can that everybody can use. Any one of your staff, male or female, small or big, can use that. And he looks to the chef and he says, so-and-so, how would you feel about going to all 32 gallons and Slim Jims on the property? And she replied with, I love that idea. I know confidently that I can lift this can into the dumpster in the back of the property without asking for any help. I also know that my last restaurant that I was in in New York, we were audited by OSHA because our trash weight was too heavy. So with him saying that, or hearing that, excuse me, and immediately put it in his brain that number one, I want to save my staff. I don't want any open myself up for a lawsuit, but also um, this is just a cost savings total package right here. So with that being said, he had, he really entertained the idea. Uh, I, we did not end up getting that business, not due to this can reduction proposal, but for other uh, reasons regarding other categories on the property. Um, however, that was a very receptive call that we made. The operator was very on board of what we were proposing. And in this circumstance, we are 100% uh, of the belief of being consultative and showing you solutions as the operator. We don't want to just quote you the same one size fits all bag as Melissa was saying. Excellent. Thank you, Nick. Thank so you. back back to my example of the concept of would you spend $1,000 if you could save 300 If you could take, again, 10 cans, reduce them down to 32. I know everybody wants the 44, but I tell you, if you go from a 44 to a 32 or you go to all Slim Jims, 
the amount of significant savings that you're going to have. Don't think, well, I'm not going to get the same number of pulls and I'm going to use more liners. Well, you know what? If you're going to use more liners, and, and again, we can show you the math, uh, you're still going to come out way ahead. We're talking significant savings. Look at Joe going from a 23-gallon or uh, using a 60-gallon and a 23, 70% waste um, and we got them a case price that was way more competitive with our, our Slim Jim liner, a 1.3 mil, and we save them $15,000. Now, you all know as operators how big your operation is. And I said in the beginning, the bigger your operation, the more impact we can have. So, one, excuse me, John. Go ahead, one, one point, and I wanted to bring this up because I feel like it's important to uh, finish the rest of the story. So, with that being said, with a 32 gallon can, he was using a 1.7 mil bag, mm. pretty thick bag, maybe even too thick. So at Edward Don, we Overkill. have a 1.5 mil, very, very tough 32 gallon sure fit bag. And after we finished our discussion, I moved right over to uh, proposing the next um, phase of the, uh, the call, which was, okay, try out our 1.5 mil, 104.1936, 33 by 45, uh, 32 gallon sure fit bag. Very, very tough. Um, even sometimes maybe even considered overkill. We have very tough bags even in a 1.3. So in this circumstance, we identified the largest can. We talked can reduction. We identified a 32 gallon was the most used can on the property. And we proposed the DAW number. In this case, I think we were proposing a savings of up to $10 a case. And the customer was really blown away about those uh, numbers. It's real, it's real. We do it all the time and we can do it for you, for sure. Uh, if you let us do our waste audit, let, you, let us propose to you a, a good can reduction or size reduction strategy. Melissa, what's another way we can show savings to the operator? Um, so this is a, a way I've, I've, I have a large, this is an example of how a, a customer was really able to maximize their savings with liners. Uh, it's a large, large multi-unit restaurant group in Chicago, and they already use SureFit. We got them on board with that, but another thing that they decided to do was they decided to go with a lighter bag, a high-density bag, which we don't normally talk about in the kitchen, using wow. the kitchen. I'll talk about that in a little yeah, bit, next. But, um, but they decided to use a high-density bag, which you know, their trash is heavy, wet trash with sharp objects, not something I would recommend to use with high density. But what they are doing is they are taking the entire can on a dolly out to the dumpster and they're dumping the entire can. So what they really are using the bag for is really not a bag, they're using oh. it as a liner. They're lining the can to keep, their, the, the, keep the garbage can clean, but it allows them to save a lot of money. So they just need sure. a liner, they don't need a bag. They do. If they had to have a bag, they'd be taking the bag out of the can and dragging it across the kitchen. And high density probably wouldn't work for that. For them, they're maximizing their savings by going with A, sure fit, and B, high density, which is a lighter weight bag, therefore lighter case weight, lighter right. cost. Right, That's right. Let's, let's dive right into the difference between high density and low linear density. High density, versus low linear density. We get this question all the time. And Melissa is going to give you, like she taught me years ago, how to identify and what the difference is. Go ahead, Melissa. What's the difference? So let's talk about high density first, which is kind of that hazy, clear plastic generally that we see out there, trash can liner. Um, Nick's going to do some demos for it. It's a, it's a more of a brittler, stiffer product. It doesn't have a lot of stretch. Um, it's great in certain areas where you have heavy trash. It's not great with heavy wet trash that you generally see in the kitchen with sharp objects. So the nature of high density is, is that it's fairly resistant to puncture, but once it punctures, it splits. And it Watch. doesn't just split a little, I, I it mean, splits. So yeah. to use it in a kitchen and try to take it out of the can and drag it to the dumpster isn't gonna work most of the time, it's gonna split. So that, it, we're going to see high density used and you see it a lot used in housekeeping at hotels. I see it in restrooms. Um, uh, you can see it um, in many areas where there's not a lot of heavy 
trash with sharp objects. But so it, now, Nick, but go excuse ahead, me, Nick. Melissa, it found its way in the back of house. Why did it find its way in back of house? What's your opinion, Melissa? You've been doing this a, a while. Cost, simply mm -hmm. cost. It's, it's uh, the, the operator decided I'm gonna give this a try and kind of like the example I gave you earlier about that restaurant group, they decided to uh, go with a lighter bag, but they're going to carry the whole can out to the dumpster. And that's, that's effective. That makes, and that allows them sure. to save more money. So that's why it's found its way into the back of the house. Perfect. Thank you for that explanation. Sure. So tell us about low linear density. So low density is more of a traditional can liner. It's, it's stretchy. It's stretchy error, I will say. Um, it's, uh, a strong product, but once it punctures, Nick's going to show you how it stretches. So when it punctures also, so see the stretch, stretch with that product. So it's got a lot of give to it, um, a lot of forgiveness if there's something sharp. And if something sharp punctures it and it's harder to puncture, the hole's not going to split wide open like it did with a high density. So it's, it's a better bag for back of the house at restaurants. Um, it's, it's great for outdoor venues. Um, any, like Nick was showing us those pictures of the outdoor cans of that, that venue where he went into and took pictures. Um, it's, it's an ideal product for most trash, um, especially back of the house in the kitchen. You know, and I know that there's going to be operators out here and they're going to cringe for what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it and we'll prove it to you because we want to, we want you to test, we want you to sample, and I like to do blind, blind testing. What does blind testing mean? I send you a roll of liners or we send you a case, depending on what your need is, if you've got a multiple, multiple locations. Uh, we have you test a lower gauge liner and don't, don't say anything, just put them in the cans and see what kind of feedback you've got. Because I'm telling you, all of our resin is USA virgin resin made right here in the United States. We don't import and we don't use a lot of repro. So there's recycled content in it, which we can talk a little bit about because you've got some green, uh, you can get some green leads points or green restaurant association uh, points for it by using recycled content, post recycled consumer content. But our bags are USA made and they hold up. Do they not, Melissa? Yeah, they hold up beautifully. A 1.5, I, I put up against sometimes a two mil bag and never have any complaints. Exactly. And it's a 1.5 mil probably will hold over 100 pounds more than you'd ever want to put in a bag and try to carry. And because a lot of our operators have run into um, really inferior bags with a lot of repro in it, these are recycled bags remade coming from overseas back in the United States. They're so used to getting such a horrible bag, they think they've got to go up. Remember, you buy your liners like you buy your meat, buy the pound. Mm -hmm. So let us show you the SureFit can liner system, show you proper tensile strength and gauge, and show you the right size bag. So let's move on. So Melissa, can we really move the needle in, in these operators operation? Can you share with us maybe a couple case examples of how we saved significant dollars for an operator and how that savings was identified? Sure, sure. Nick, I think uh, if you would put up, okay. Let's talk about uh, Glory Day Cafe, um, which is a true, um, uh, customer experience that we had. Um, they have 20 locations. Uh, we went in and we did a waste audit, like John talked about, where they were using a 38 by 60, 14 micron bag, 200 per case. So after looking around and looking at their garbage cans, we discovered that they've got Slim Jims and 32 gallon brutes. So here they are putting a 60 gallon bag and a 23 and a 32 gallon can. So right away, you know, that's exciting stuff for me. I'm like, Ding, 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 I can save the, money, the customer money. We love that. <laughs> so they were nice enough to share with us what they were paying from a competitor. They were paying a little over $30 a case. Um, they buy uh, between all their locations, 160 cases a month, and they were spending about $58,000 a year. I did these calculations for, for them and the rep. So we see an opportunity right off the bat um, to help them. Nick, if you'll go to the next slide, thank you. So what we ended up doing is we, they were adamant about one bag for both cans. They weren't willing to go with the two bag system. So by quoting them a bag that 
32 gallon bag. It fits the 32 like a glove tied around the rim with a six to eight inch overhang. A little big for the Slim Jim. They maybe tie it off a little bit, but both bag, that bag will fit both cans. So we were able to get them in a bag with essentially the same thickness and we were able to quote them $19 a case. And based on their usage, we were, they, they, their new spend is $36,000 a year. So we were able to save them $22,000 wow. a year on yep. 20 location store, uh, which these days, especially that kind of money is just gold. And um, so customer was very, very excited and switched the business instantly to Edward Don. Great. Excellent, excellent case study. I too had a experience a couple years ago. Um, well, we, ever since COVID kind of things have taken a pause. However, uh, I worked with a very large uh, sea store chain in the Southeast, had about 85 to 90 locations. Uh, they were using nine SKUs, okay, throughout their whole footprint. We reduced them to three SKUs got them the pro proper fit for their outdoor and inside cans, we saved this operation over $200,000. Did I hear what I just said? $200,000. That's real money. Why throw it away in a landfill? Take that money, grow your ticket sales, grow your revenue, buy more equipment, make more food, whatever you want to do, don't throw it away. Okay. And then I had another one, which is a small 40, 40 to 44 multi-unit, uh, just in, we did, we did disposable gloves and liners, but just the liners alone, we saved them by, again, giving, giving them the right size, giving them great pricing, reducing their size down because they were buying too big of a bag, over $40,000, $40,000. $40, Listen, operators, I'm sure you can find a lot to do with 15,000, 25,000, 40,000, or 200,000. Again, I don't know the size of your operation. The bigger you are, the more impact we can have. And why throw it away? Reinvest it or do something else with it. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it right now. I mean, we'd like to uh, open it up for and John, can I just give a couple more examples sure, of, of where we were able to real time? One in particular, I think was really important is was a casino that I worked oh, yes. with. And they allowed us to go in and do uh, uh, an audit that we talked about. And we were able to go in and see all of their facility. We looked at the casino floor. We looked at the restaurants. We looked at the hotel. We even looked at the small mall that was attached to the casino and looked at the cans that were out side. Um, so we did the whole thing. Um, we were able to convert them to SureFit and we saved them over $30,000 a year. But the point I wanted to make for them, the green initiative was just as important to them as the savings and they needed to be green. And the idea of right. quoting them smaller bags that weighed less, we were adding less, automatically adding less plastic to the landfill. So that was number one in reducing their carbon footprint. But then they also ended up going with our green third party certified recycled content mm -hmm. black can liners mm -hmm. in their kitchens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that also helped reduce their carbon footprint. So that customer, it was a win-win across the board. They were Perfect. just so happy. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'm watching the clock and uh, I want if Melissa, you can answer one more question quickly for us before we jump into Q&A, because I don't want to hold our, our guests up any longer than we need to. Um, okay. If operators listening, Melissa, really want to st get started with realizing some savings, real savings, uh, where should they start? Well, I think the first step is to reach out to your Edward Don rep and ask them how we can, they can bring us in or the Edward Don rep can come in and start doing the waste audit so we can start saving them money right away. Yeah, it's real. It's impactful. It's, it's there. So again, it's, it's 141 uh, or 1241 or 1141, wherever you're at. Um, you know, at this point, I think let's just open a Q and A. Uh, we don't want to hold folks up. So are there any questions or anybody else want to uh, discuss anything else? If We'll take your questions now, if you'd like, uh, for Nick, myself, or Melissa. Okay, we have one question. 
Uh, the question is from Illinois, and it is, okay, uh, Melissa, how, if I have an operator that is looking to, um, what's the first thing for our operator, I'm, I'm sorry, to get involved with, um, a, for Leeds Credit or Green Restaurant Association? Um, you mean the first step for them to get involved? What's the that? first step? Yes. I think they need to reach out to the Green Restaurant Association is number one, and also to the government to find out how they can start getting lead credits. There, there's a plethora of information on the website. Mm -hmm. um, John, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, I would say, you know, let's double check to see what kind of line, you know, what kind of size cans they're using. Let's do the waste audit. Let's see, because we have several SKUs. Nick, can you put that, actually, you had that slide up perfectly. Can you put that slide back up uh, for our SureFit uh, SKUs? And what's, there it is. Here's the recycled content uh, on anything you see on this, under the SureFit recycled liners, you can see them, they're in green. Uh, and all of those sizes have the recycled content, post-consumer content in it, recycled content that qualifies for US GBC lead credits or MR credits. And I know, you, as Melissa said, you wanna check the Green Restaurant Association for that as yes, well. Yes, and the US GBC is also a great resource to mm -hmm, check. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, 10%, it's got 10%, 10% post-consumer uh, content in it. I think that's a great way to start. Hopefully that answered uh, your, your question. So uh, any other questions out there? Before we wrap up. Okay. I have, I have one suggestion uh, sure. to add to our, our attendees and our customers and our operators that are joining us today. I'll just get my, get my video back up here. Um, while I'm doing that, I think it's, it's uh, important to talk about, if you uh, consistency with your with your cans, and if you guys already touched on this while we were going through the presentation, um, hopefully just kind of dive in a little bit deeper. Um, what we constantly see in a lot of operators and properties is a lot of different cans. So oh, yeah. if you have the ability to work with your Edward Don rep, the Don rep and us will work very closely to propose cans that will ultimately be a benefit, especially in new opens. If you can address your can receptacles right off the bat to accommodate uh, the SureFit or the 32 gallon sizes or below, you can really impact right off the bat uh, your bottom line. Um, you're going to ultimately save money and it's going to be less of a headache for operators that have existing businesses. You know, we constantly see it that there's hotels that have funny looking cans. And I understand for decor and for uh, the appeal to your, um, your customer that's walking through the door. But if you can work with your Edward Don rep, work with us, um, finding receptacles that will work well. We've even gone into restaurants before and I've gone into an airport here in Florida and I have literally taken a 32 gallon Carlisle brute can and looked at a square receptacle with a double open on it and try to slide in the 32 gallon just to ultimately save right. space, save money, keep that bag consistent. Right. The more that you can keep consistency in your receptacles, the more you're going to win in saving dollars uh, for your operation. So I think it's important to take those things into consideration because at the end of the day, it's a trash bag. It's a trash can. These are very, very simple things, but they can make huge impacts on your bottom line. So well, we well just said. tried to really, uh, help you expound your uh, interest and your thinking on that. And we ultimately just want to show every one of you solutions in a category that many overthink. They overlook it. It's a category. They overlook. Yeah, thank There's you. something I think that disconnects mentally with um, trash liners. It's, it, you don't think about putting pen to paper to get, uh, to, together to see what your actual spend is. And that's one of the things that when, when I started, you know, years ago with, with the Hody group, Melissa, you know, taught me break down the spend for it. These operators don't realize how much they're spending. And when they, and they're like, Joe, they're scratching their head and they're furious because they're like, I'm spending how much. 
you know, the, the brain doesn't like to go with something you throw that, you know, to deal with trash, trash is dirty, but um, you can save a lot of operational say you can find a lot of operational savings in trash, especially when you standardize your trash cans across your footprint and reduce your can size. People don't come in. Most of our competitors don't come in and talk to you about this. Um, they they just, you know, what do you need this week? What, what, what line are you using? Trust me. Get together with your Don rep, get us involved. We're going to see if we can find you some savings. We hunt for savings, don't we? I get yes, real excited yeah. when we find them the money. Yeah. So Exciting. All right. Well, let's close. Uh, it's 147. Uh, any other questions, Nick? Is there anything else sitting in the queue? I don't believe so. I think we covered all it right. all. Well, we want to thank you for your time and attention today. Thanks for joining us thank for yet another much. HDI product focus and um, hopefully we delivered you some savings and, and solutions. Nick, Melissa, thank you for participating with us today yeah. and thank all you. of your help. And uh, for more information, as you can see on the screen here, please contact your Edward Don rep that invited you uh, or your local Edward Don rep, or you, if you're looking for more information, you can get a hold of Nick, myself, or Melissa at productfocus at hodygroup.com. Thanks. Have a great rest of the week and stay well, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks, everyone. See y'all. Thank you. Hope you learned a few things today. <laughs>